Well, for more insight into what's happening on the broader markets, let's bring in Quincy Crosby, Chief Global Strategist for LPL Financial. Quincy, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. So what do you make of, of the Fed minutes? Maybe if we start there, because I, I know that they're they're somewhat old at this point, but they're still important to go through to you know try to uh, glean any insights into the thinking that went into the decision and also what could be coming next. Was there anything in particular that jumped out to you? Well, yes, I, you went over that. And that is the Fed's overriding the majority commitment towards restoring price stability. That, that was important. And of course, the headline that emerged from that in the, you know, after there was released was higher for longer. It doesn't mean that the Fed is absolutely going to be higher for longer, events take hold, but nonetheless, you could see that their commitment is that they must restore price stability. And other central banks are in the same camp there seems to be a, a sense, including Bank of Canada, that you cannot let inflation start to rise again before you actually make that important pivot. How do you think the situation has evolved since this uh, September meeting and, and even the messaging that we've heard from Fed officials? Well, you know, rates rose actually quite markedly in the United States. And you'll hear the comment, we've heard it over and over again, that the market itself is doing the Fed's job for it. So when you have rates rise at a faster clip, what happens is there's much more concern. The cap cost of capital goes up, credit cards go up, and so on. And that tends to pull back on consumer spending and also corporate spending. And the Fed has mentioned that many times, that the market is being tightened by those rates moving higher. So therefore, perhaps it's not necessary for the Fed to come in with another rate hike. However, rates are coming down. Part of that may be Treasury buying glo from global in, uh, traders and investors during this uh, Middle East crisis. Um, if that ceases and it dissipates, the rates may continue to move higher. Uh, today, we had the producer price index. That actually climbed higher. Granted, it was oil and food related. But nonetheless, most Americans, as in Canada, don't live in another channel. They actually live with food and energy yeah. as an important component of their budgets. So this is going to be important, especially tomorrow with the CPI, Consumer Price Index, coming out. The market's going to respond instantaneously. And also, we will keep our eye on the Fed Fund's futures market for probability of a rate hike, not in November, but perhaps in December. So how, what do you think would have to play out to raise that likelihood of a, of a hike in December? That is if core inflation, which has been coming down, but parts of it are sticky. There is an expectation that if you waited long enough, it would come down to a level that was appropriate for price stability. The question though is, will that rise more than the market expects at this point? And will the Fed actually be patient enough to allow core, sticky core to untangle? The hunch based on those minutes is the Fed is not interested in pausing for too long because they worry about a repeat of the 1970s. Pause, and then inflation picks up, economic growth slows, and then before you know it, you have a stagflationary environment. Quincy, you, you mentioned the Middle East a little earlier, and I, I'm curious what you've been looking at to try to gauge what sort of, you know, a, a fallout this could potentially have that investors, you know, markets should be aware of. Well, you know, crude oil is probably one of the most vulnerable commodities to anything. Their hyper, uh, crude oil market is, is hyper alert to any shift in that uh, conflict and to whether or not it will move beyond just the area that is involved in the conflict right now, the non-oil producing part of the Middle East. If, however, it looks as if 
even Hezbollah uh, seen as a surrogate for Iran. If the Israelis are focused on that, and if the worry is that it could spread, you're going to see oil prices climb, despite the fact that the Saudis have come in and said, you know, we want to make sure that there is, a, a, you know, an equilibrium in the market. Uh, that's why oil prices have come down today. But nonetheless, crude is ultra, ultra focused on that conflict because it can change in a dime. And we heard from the head of Pioneer, the company that is mm-hmm. being uh, merged with Exxon, talk about that, the concern that this goes beyond that contained area uh, that the uh, market is focused on at this moment. Yeah, the the CEO of, of Pioneer or the, the outgoing yeah. CEO of Pioneer talking about the possibility yeah. that it could lead to a, a surge in, in oil prices. I am yeah. curious, maybe just on your take on, on this deal with Exxon uh, taking over Pioneer, it, it's a, a, a very large deal. Uh, what What do you make of it? You know, they, there was talk about this deal some months ago, and then and then it faded from the headlines. Uh, it's an important deal because the CEO of, of Exxon Mobil made the comment. He said, "You know, everyone talks about peak oil. Well, there's going to be an awful lot of time that we're going to need a secure." Uh, stockpile and and reserves for oil. And he made that case. And, you know, the Permian, uh, the complementary synergies between Pioneer and um, Exxon are attractive. And it it helps bring oil out, uh, the shale out at a, a lesser cost. And the fact of the matter is that most likely this is going to lead to other deals. Uh, You know, one successful deal, if this goes through in 2024, it is always the catalyst for a pipeline of similar deals. Maybe not as big, but certainly deals within shale and some of of, uh, the majors.